very good afternoon to all thank you for being here today our today's topic of discussion is a new topic which we have not covered in a c connect yet that is master creation and user right creation in tally prime our expert for today is ca atul gupta atul sir is a tally evangelist he is a practicing ca for over 25 years now he is a faculty member at ici for system audit and also content audit he does system implementation which includes accounting inventory payroll master creations creating sops on masters and training the staff on using the same other than that he is a regular speaker at various forums conducting cp trainings and also corporate trainings we are glad that atul ji take out time from a very busy schedule of his own and agree to do our session so thank you atul ji and somebody has mentioned the audio is not available uh, is my audio available to you atul sir yeah It is there. Okay. Uh, so, Rendra Ji, requesting you to please uh, check your internet connection. Might be the same. So, before we begin, Atul Sir likes to keep his sessions very interactive. So, please keep your hands on keyboard and. Uh, okay. Thank you, Sir. So, please keep your hands on keyboard and revert to Atul Sir's chat queries. Thank you so much. Over to you, Atul Sir. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Kumal. Thanks for the introduction. So, let us start. Uh, we have got <coughs> submissions. Uh, so i am sharing the ppt we'll use the submissions made by the attending people and then we'll so let us start the session itself okay now uh, because we are starting the session uh, i'll request the participants to uh, comment on audio video and visibility of ppt is everything okay <clears throat> yes sir okay okay thank you rena thank you ketan yeah so uh, i keep the session interactive i've seen the form which uh, many of you have filled in fact we have people attending from jammu and kashmir till Tam south of india that is tamil nadu and we have people from uh, gujarat till uh, i think probably someone from uh, west bengal also so it's a uh, across india session thanks for finding time and being here now uh, let us get to the session uh, the core is uh, <laughs> the core is that <clears throat> what exactly i want to pass to you so be sure that i am not here to help you learn understand how to create a master absolutely not uh, we'll be talking about there are various categories of master that we have uh, so each master creation itself is going to be a 2 hour 4 hour session what exactly we want to do so i was just talking to komal from tally and i am so thankful for tally to tally itself uh, to give this opportunity to me and many such members across india to share their thoughts so see uh, my association with tally is since my ca article ship uh, and we have been using uh, tally uh, komal has shared a form uh, all of those who have not filled please fill the form now what exactly is the point so over these long association with tally what i have realized that there is a fundamental gap that i am basically trying to bring on trying to fill so the core is that see tally our understanding for tally is like that it's an accountant software and accountants have to use it what my basic understanding is that we need to upgrade our thought process so that we consider tally as a part of management purposes management objectives as a part of implementing policy decisions done by management in our system in fact the last session i had was exactly on the, a very important topic uh, generally tally users will not perceive that that was grc governance risk and compliance how you can do it through tally today's topic about master suppose user rights is basically to bring it to that level of awareness as a management person that if i use tally then how i can ensure that my tally is there which i can use for decision making purposes which i can implement my policies through using this system which i can use for decision making and proper information sharing the core of today's session is going to be this aspect second one of the things built into the session is that we all know a terminology gigo garbage in garbage out so when you talk of gigo what is the core so i was i before coming to the session from my own professional experience as a charter accountant and i had talked with many accountants 
who are basically providing pure accounting services to their client regarding how the quality of report is affected if the masters are not proper. So they were all agreeing, they all understood that master creation is one of the core things to ensure the quality of report. And one idea that we all have, one thing that we are all concerned is GST compliance. And somehow I have realized that from 1st July 2017 till today, say 2nd November 2022, that is more than five years now, uh, the compliance aspect entirely itself on GST, we all know e-invoicing has been made mandatory for five crores and above. There's al already a discussion on this WhatsApp that we all, WhatsApp university that we may call that probably e-invoice maybe will be made mandatory for one crore or two crore, crores turnover in near future. Beyond that, the point that I wish to make is that your compliances are getting critical day by day, timely, uh, quality of compliance, the correctness, accuracy of compliance, how you are going to ensure that accuracy through your system itself. So the core of whatever presentations we have is basically to enable us to visualize, tally from accountant's perspective, that is step one. Our visualization has to start from the top, from top management perspective. Uh, Lay, say from those charged with governance perspective, from board of directors, from managing directors, from those who want it to be working very properly. So that is the core for which we address all the issues that I'll be coming about. So let us talk about the session, the session plan. Okay, so first part will be on masters. Uh, what, how you create, what you don't do in master, the do's and don'ts of master. Second aspect will be user rights. Or somehow, uh, I've realized uh, that, uh, let me ask this question. Let you. I wanted to create one more quiz, but then we had only one uh, uh, that you have all responded. Google form has been shared uh, by Komal from Tally. So you have, I understand you all have filled the form. Let me ask this question. <clears throat> uh, we'll go through the Google form, the data that is created. So at locations you are using tally it may be your own business you may be chartered accountant service providers uh, how many of you would say yes that you are using user rights so i request you to please put a yes in chat box that will let me know that you are actually using user rights manish yes uh, <laughs> so true weight animal says no uh, if I pronounce the name correctly, you'll excuse me for that. Let us read. So how many yes we have? So Manish has yes. Then Truvet has no. Uh, Ratinam has yes. Bharat has yes. Nikita has yes. Vineet has yes. Anil has yes. Sabu has no. Ketan has no. Good. So it is truthful. It's like a confession box. We can always say the truth. Good. Thanks for this. Ramesh is saying yes. Nikita, yeah. I read yes. The Hitesh is also saying yes. Sonia is yes. Arif is yes. Nikunj is saying no. So my understanding is that the way things are... Sanjeev is also saying no. Good. Thank you, Sanjeev. Satyanarayan has raised hand. Please put your query in the chat box. So that gives the interaction easy. Okay. So Sanjeev is also saying no. Nikunj has said no. Now what does it mean? See, my belief... My association is tally with tallies two decades. The first day I was associated with Tally, I knew that user configuration has to be there. It's a mandate. Today, post GST, it has become hugely critical. I'll be bringing cases, live cases to help us understand why user right configurations are so important in the business environment that we are working today. Okay. And, <clears throat> okay. One more question. Uh, how many of you are users of tally for yourself so you can say own self probably in google form you have said but there is a distinction so manish says own self and service provider so you can say own self o for own self sp for service provider how many are of your service provider that means you are using tally for your clients yeah so ratinam says sp service provider. that does my job so today by this uh, the time we end the session both jigar thank you 
uh, by the time we end this session, probably you will have some opportunities, business opportunities, uh, more billable uh, scenarios created for you. Arif is also both. Sabu is SP. Truvet is original user. Great. Okay. Thank you. So let us continue. Kishore is also original. <clears throat> KP Kabra is both. Ketan is service provider. Uh, Vijay Kumar is original. Jigar is both. Priyanka is service provider. Vinit is service provider. Mansi, she has <laughs> she has used uh, reduced her effort. Put only S. Great Mansi. Thank you. Service provider. Nikita is original. Manish is service provider. Ratinam is service provider. Yeah. Snail is both. Uh, <clears throat> Bulandran, if I pronounce it correctly, both. Okay. Now, so we are talking about this. The master creation aspects in Tally, user rights creation and Tally Prime. The core idea is clear. Now, see the whole session, I'll request you to look from top end. Just say, Hindi mein kahete, Ganga upar se niche bhati hai. So you have to look from the top. <clears throat> My God. Hitesh, it, yes, uh, beyond the smiley you have put, uh, it must have been trouble. Okay. Great, Hitesh. Thank you. Now, so the visualization has to come, come from the top. How you look at tally like that? Yeah. So all symbols are for their uh, respective owners. I will see through it. I'll show you practically. You learn it. Truvit Animal Nutrition, it is name of the company. And what is your name? Is uh, Okay. I realize now that you're logged in from the name of the company. Yeah. Sumir. Okay. Sumir, you, I read it that in the Google form. You are from Srinagar. Yeah. Sumir. Yes. Good. So, master do's and don'ts. Let us go about that. <clears throat> I get that inferiority complex uh, when I... Uh, meet people online who are from Srinagar, Jammu, Kashmir, like that, Ladakh, fantastic. The best places on earth. There is a question. Hamza is from Kerala. Okay. Thank you, Hamza. Uh, please use chat. Okay. Thank you. So that I, Q, I have to uh, open it separately. A yeah, paradise on earth. Absolutely. No doubts. Thank you. Kerala, which city, Hamza? Kerala is also beautiful. I, I'm not very sure how many of us have traveled to Kerala. <clears throat> so this form, I think you have already filled. So let us, <laughs> let us look to the statistics of the form. So just give me a second. I'll bring what exactly was the issue for all of this. Uh, who have, anyone who has not filled the form, I'll request, please kindly fill the same. Uh, <clears throat> Just give me a second. Yeah. I'll bring the statistics. That was the core uh, when we want we wanted this form to be filled by all of us. Yeah. Uh, Kumal has been sharing. I've shared again. I'll share the screen of the statistics of the form. Yeah. Now, is the graph visible? Please say yes in the chat. Yes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Now see what you are looking at. So, so most of us who have responded to this is uh, basically using for their own business or their uh, service like we charter accountants are practicing. CA, we are service providers like that. Then we have uh, for academics for educational purpose, uh, we have someone who is using as a CA. So in his or her own office, then uh, as an auditor, that is good. We also have auditor version. Tally student, the accountant will be part of, okay. So we, it's updating itself. So you look at the, but 70% roughly of all people present are using it for their own business or own service providing business like that. Great. That includes CAs also. 
and this was the one that i wanted all of us to learn <clears throat> so when i say master what exactly we mean so i think we are clear on accounts now say 20 <laughs> Because it was multiple submissions, most of you say when I say master, it includes the accounts, that is great. Inventory. So when I say master, it includes inventory masters also. When I say payroll, now this is what is the point that I wish we could learn. Please understand. <clears throat> uh, tally, we, uh, we have a client for whom we have been providing this salary audit service since quite long. It's a US-based company. They've got their development center in India. So after, <clears throat> that association has been reasonably long. Say some five, uh, six years back, uh, the company proposed that can their payroll be configured into tally itself. Prior to this proposal, the whole tally, uh, whole Excel was used for configuration of payroll. We took effort, we created, a, because being online, I don't want to share the fee per se like that but it was reasonably well built. We configured their whole payroll in tally. And since that day till today, their whole payroll is working on tally. Now see, uh, I told you this, we are looking from a management's perspective. So we are people who are users of tally for their business. We, are, we have people in the group who are service providers for tally users or for their clients. Uh, please understand that payroll itself is a good service that can be provided. One of the largest outsource activity after accounting is payroll and it's a big opportunity. So this gap is reflection of the gap in uh, presentation that payroll master is also part of master itself. So this service we must get into. We must create opportunity for ourselves to be able to create. Okay. It's a fin and then because... Okay, now salaries uh, or say payroll per se, every entity has some definitions, but what we have found that we, in fact, the, the entity that I'm talking about, let me bring the best part that came up. See, previous, before the payroll was configured in tally itself. So the employee had to take, say, suppose the employee goes for some loan, education loan or a car loan uh, or a home loan. So the banker, Providing the loan would require that salary slip. Now, how to do it? So they had created a format of salary slip and then that format was printed every time. Now, because the payroll was configured in tally, so it was generated through tally itself. So it's an opportunity for all of us to, because the gap is there. There's a gap of 50% if you look from accountant pers perspective and payroll on the graph itself. Then statutory master that I think we are most of us are clear then we had an option of others also so someone said uh, masters as journals masters that are created by CA and masters for audit so okay I'll accept that but top four are the most important aspects within tally the accounts the inventory payroll and statutory please put some effort to learn about payroll and believe me it's a big opportunity for all of us to encash looking from a practitioner side of tally itself. So that was the core that I wanted all of us to get into that what service we can, what we get from the session. See, today's session has to create more business opportunities for those who are service providers and better utilization of tally, those who are using tally in their own business itself. So it has to add that value. That is the core. Okay, let us bring the presentation again. Okay, so thanks to all. Uh, we had more than 30 submissions on the Google form. So that was there. You have done it. Now let us go to the session. <clears throat> Our master creation session will have a process of only unlearning of master creation. I'll bring this. Uh, unlearning means we need to unlearn. Unlearn is, I think we have heard from a lot of, I don't know who, who was the first person who created this uh, uh, three word acronym or three word definition of how the success, how it comes. So the success comes, I'm typing it in the chat, learn, unlearn and relearn. So the learn part you have already through. So I'm not here to tell how to create master, but I'm going to tell how to unlearn creation of master. And once the unlearning is done, then we'll do the relearn. So that is exactly what we are looking at. Uh, 
no uh, okay sabu I, you asked a very good query so <clears throat> it's like the accounting na so suppose my company is abc or xyz company so xyz company if i create in tally in that that xyz company i'll be creating accounts for xyz company in that xyz i'll not be able to create accounts for abc so if i, I want to create abc accounts i will have to create another company same for payroll so if xyz company payroll you are creating you will be able to do payroll of xyz if you want to create payroll for abc then you create a abc payroll like that okay so <clears throat> uh, keep your queries on see queries are always learning and that is exactly what we need to understand the interaction has to be there so please and uh, i understand we see we are all using tally so any question we ask is going to be learning for yourself myself and all the audience also okay so we'll be talking about the process of earn learning then learning how to do it what we need to understand my core focus is on point number 3 and point number 4 so uh, there is a huge gap in terms of creation of sops whether tally require sop for master creation we'll learn that <clears throat> now what happens that you create uh, we always say that it's always good to create a good infrastructure the trouble is that you need to maintain that infrastructure so for me from an accountant from a user from an owner creating good valid master is one aspect the second more important aspect is maintenance of master and the last i have added more specifically from chartered accountants perspective that there is a uh, option of auditing of masters we need to learn i'll bring some cases why this becomes so important so let us first start with the masters earn learning process and if the next slide comes and if you all agree kindly say yes in the chat so i am not reading it say yes in the chat if you agree to the line on the slide <clears throat> thanks anil so yes this is and believe me i am some one of the person in the our participating audience he or she has said that he or she is an accountant i i have deep respect but our concern is the process <laughs> so what i i am creating a problem i'll create a solution also okay so believe me uh, we must do away with capability of the person making accounting entry he or she must not be able to create a ledger i am dead sure on that i understand this line has deep implication that if you don't allow accountant to create a ledger then how it is i'll tell you how you have to do it so the the only thing i want all of us to unlearn is that kill alt c kill that key stop using it if you are owner of the business tell your accountant that you cannot use it and if you if your accountant is not listening to you then i'll tell you how to restrict that today we'll do that and if your service provider then we we'll learn how we implement that whole setup of user restrictions to ensure that the accountants are not able to use alt c what i've realized that see understand i am taking gst only as an example there will be more issues but gst because it is more pertinent more contemporary uh, more issues come because monthly compliances are there so you generate this <clears throat> uh, gst data gst r1 3b all data that we generate through tally so when you generate it gives error so more than 50% of the error that the tally data talks about that error is generated because the master data of a vendor or a customer has not been properly configured and in fact uh, tally has a very good feature that when you create master data and if some information like gst is not incorrect but it gives you a warning but then uh, you press enter twice and it takes that in so that is very important so first and the only aspect i want all of you to unlearn is alt c delete alt c from accountant's profile we'll see how to delete first yes nail it is present in tally and we'll see how to undo that part now this is important 
understanding see when you create masters we must <clears throat> see master creation is like what see the comfort is very high on creating masters but when you start creating master uh, just say <clears throat> uh, i'm just putting it back to you say debtors so in debtors this uh, it really allows you to create something called as credit limits in fact within account master you can create budgets also but keeping restricting on the things that we all have been using we have been doing on say credit limits now when you create credit limits for a debtor uh, generally what happens our visualization is what that okay master credit limit if, if suppose we want to create a credit limit so you create a credit limit that is enough to give a 3 months credit to the customer it doesn't take the whole business cycle or how your business is going to grow and growth of your business how it is linked to that person's business so whenever you create master this visualization has to come to the growth parameter that you are going to come into we'll be talking about this when we talk more on maintenance part so when you create master when you create say for example only debtors master creditors master there is a concept of uh, this uh, credit limits built into system so how you build that credit limit so look from the business perspective just saying it in hindi is vyakti se kitne samay kitna bada main vyapar karunga uske aadhar par uski credit limit tay karunga the time frame the periodicity the volume the growth of my business link to my creditors and um, debtors that has to be part of my master creation that is very very important in fact uh, post 1st july 2017 we all realized that master creation itself today means uh, let me put to the service providers <clears throat> you have to say yes to the question do we charge for master creation in tally say yes no no why you don't charge most do so this is exactly i told you it will create huge opportunities for all of us master creation is an art yeah manish that i'll agree so case to case means i charge it i take it as i am charging exactly that is the point that <clears throat> because you are going to visualize it you are going to build the business of the entity into an accounting software so that we must be able to do that is how it has to come <clears throat> must do ah uh, to wait the question was that all those service providers those who are providing service to their clients those who are providing say, accounting service or any service whether tally is with the service provider and client is using that tally or in any case tally is installed at the client but you are doing all the uh, accounting and all those jobs so do as a part of your as association with the client are you charging separate fee for master creation see except for manish 90% of you have said no that itself tells the gap that we have created in our services that visualization has not been built that yes we must bill for it. that is the point okay taha has also said no <clears throat> so lot of uh, people have joined because few locations i did keep a track of okay ha <laughs> Tanuj was the first to submit the Google form, and Tanuj is also saying, "Sir, we are not charging anything." Great. Now, no, Snehal. Oh, no, no, no. Not that is not the way. See, uh, okay, I am answering Snehal's point. It. <clears throat> see the way you. So let us. Uh, in fact, Snehal, the your question is related to the slide that you are looking at, but just I am bringing the. guidance to the question that we have created so when i visualize a client suppose i have to create masters so i need to understand the business the way the business is going the way the business is going to grow what are say what is their accounting masters today and the future prospect 
So say 1st April 2023, we want to create new master. So I'll be doing study, not on 1st April, I'll be studying it from January, creating, uh, evaluating the present masters, the incompetencies, and then creating new masters so that the data shift is proper from 1st April 2023. So it's there. And then some gap in terms of some rectifications, update modifications are part of the process. So it's a done job. Then. The process of creation SOPs. SOP, uh, I think most of us understand, but only for the sake of it, I'm sh sharing the, it is standard operating procedures. Now I'm very much for it. <clears throat> standard operating procedures to be created for creating masters. Not exactly we mean by it. So I told you that we are going to kill Alt C. So in the second part of today's discussion, when we talk about user rights, we'll see that how can you restrict accountant capability of using Alt C. So they'll not be able to create a new master that we are going to restrict. Once that restriction is there, suppose a new vendor payment has to be made. A new vendor is there to whom a payment has to be made. Now, if I visualize it, Suppose I'm going through a very structured uh, process. So I'm just writing the process for sake of discussion. Uh, it's not necessary that this process is adopted at every location, but there is a possibility. So suppose you release purchase order through tally. So if you're releasing purchase order through tally, that means you're going to release purchase order to the new vendor. That means the vendor creation as an exercise has to be done before release of purchase order. That means you do not have the vendor invoice right now based on which you can get the vendor data. So there has to be a process of creating vendor information. What you may call as know your customer or know your vendor. So very a basic simple form has to be designed. Any vendor that has to be created in tally. So right now I'm taking example of a vendor. Then we'll talk about uh, debtor also. So creditor and debtor. So creditor. So you want to create a creditor and your process is that you release a purchase order and then purchase order goes to the vendor. It is printed through tally. The vendor sends you the invoice. So you want to release a purchase order. So before you release a purchase order, the vendor data has to be updated. So how do you get the vendor data? So the vendor must have sent you an email or vendor might have sent you a quotation. So this quotation has to have a cover page. That is my vendor creation form that I call as SOP, Standard Operating Procedure. I am absolutely clear, whatever is the size of the entity, believe me, whatever is the size of the entity for each vendor to be created, this documentation has to be there. Standard Operating Procedure, how I'm going to create a vendor. So that is for creditor, that is for debtors then see when you start creating now i talked about the issue that comes say in your gst returns one of the basic issue more than 50 percent of the cases in gs let me ask you uh, i understand uh, how many of you are following uh, filing gst returns please say yes in the chat say yes yes so prove it ketan rf good priyanka uh vinit also says yes jigar is saying yes Jigar, you are from Rajput. Uh, Sabu is saying yes. Okay. Virin, uh, you have raised hand. Please put it in chat box. Yeah. Nikita is also saying yes. Taha, uh, someone is again used. Hamza is saying yes. Okay. Probably not able to use the chat. Okay. <laughs> Jigar is saying, sir, I am a Gujarati, but from Pune. Oh, Pune, you have Kayani Bakery and Dagdu Halwai, Amrupali, Rupali. Okay, good. Ishwar is also saying yes, Ketan is saying yes. Now, the next question. So we all find the there are errors that you get in GST. <clears throat> Most of the errors that you get are relating to what? So I have given you two options. You can say M for master and T for transaction. The errors are relating to master or transaction. Arif says M. Avid Nunit says transaction except. Truvat is saying M. Ataha says transaction. Good. 
So at least two people have to put. So can be, yes, Neil, both, both. So that means based on the feedback you have given, 50% of the errors are transaction. My understanding, the actual percentage is more than 50%. See, what is, please understand, what will happen, uh, they, you must have read about this law of diminishing returns. So <clears throat> I'm using that in a very different sense. They, if the error is relating to transaction, believe me, over a period of time, the transaction error is always going to go down because the person who is accounting, he or she, they have learned that this transaction error is, is there. So it is generally going to go down. But master related error, because you are going to create a new master, so it goes up. So keeping it at even 50%, that means 50% of the errors that you have in your GST relate to the master itself. That means that we need to improve the process of creating master. That means we need to create something, whatever way you do it. I don't want, SOP may not be, need not be a hundred page document. SOP has to be single page itself that for all debtors, vendors, masters created, which are going to have implication for say GST or TDS, we are going to have a form, then only create that master and system. That is. Then when you start doing this way, then you start realizing that the rate of GST, regular, composition, exempt, SEZ, export, that data. Then when you create master through this form itself, uh, I this aspect was GST. Then there are business aspects, the credit limit you need to give, the growth, the opportunity, the nature of business. All those things are also covered when you do it through this creating SOP. Next item is inventory items. Yes, uh, because see, I wanted this discussion basically from a like creating vision, how it has to be done. So I've not taken, there are multiple aspects in inventory. Then there's a category, cost category, cost item, go down, uh, units of inventory, those who are using, anyone who's using manufacturing journal in their business or service providing client, manufacturing journal, anyone who's using it here? Yeah, Manish, thank you. So when you talk about manufacturing journal, you, uh, yeah, Snail, thank you. So manufacturing journal, you talk about bills of material, the combination of raw material needed to create the set of finished goods. So inventory has so many multiple items to be created. My core idea is clear. Again, multiply that by GST. The item of inventory that you are taking as raw material, it will be subject to some. Now, I think this um, HSN code is mandated uh, in your GST return. So while you create your inventory, I guess, Yes, yes, Manish, thank you. <clears throat> so while you create your inventory item, you create a, again a single page. Any new item goes into your tally accounting system. We have an SOP that this is the item, this is the unit of measurement, that, that is the HSN code as per GST, and this is the rate as per GST. Done. Believe me, uh, see, it is tough. When you start doing it today, it is going to be really tough. It requires a lot of convincing. But once you get into the frame, once you get into what we may call as habit of doing this way, then the quality goes on improving phenomenal. So that was on inventory masters. Then, yes, payroll masters. Now this, uh, <clears throat> in fact, uh, Komal is there. So of the proposal, I put that what session we will have today. So uh, allowing Tally to take the final decision. So I put say four point that these are the sessions we wish to take. So one of the point I had put in that was that we can have a separate session on how to create payroll master. But because it was like a new theme, new idea for tally. So we decided to keep it general. And as time progresses, as per the requirement, we it's a phenomenal thing to do in tally, payroll master creation. So uh, then if you want to create payroll masters, we require the present employee, their salary structure, they are this uh, appointment letter, their terms, the applicability of PF, ESIC, and there are complications that there is an employee who, to whom PF is applicable, but ESIC is not applicable. There is an employee to whom bonus is applicable, to whom there is not no bonus applicable. And then you can generate this uh, PF returns, the annual returns, monthly returns, 3, 6, 12. That it, uh, the PF general returns I use as a they are in multiplier of three. So three table, you remember most of the returns of PF are done. PF, ESIC. So how you create those masters? Again, uh, once you have built the SOP for creating payroll master of employee, 
So you will always know that in that SOP form, what exact details you require, employee name, address, employee, his or her, uh, say proof, identity proof, it may be Aadhaar or PAN number or driving license, passport copy, as the case may be. So once you start creating that, based on that, you start building those masters. And statutory masters are linked to uh, the top one creator data, but still uh, doing audit. From auditor's perspective, many clients, what we have found, reasonable clients, I'm talking of turnover, say 50 crores and above. So there also we found that their statutory masters are not in line with the need of the business. So that gap is already there that we can all fill. So that is master creation. It's a phenomenal job. You create standard operating procedures. So what I basically am suggesting that like we may create something called as accountant's manual where one page for each master creation, creditor, debtor, inventory, go down, batch, unit of measurement, payroll master creation. If the entity is using payroll and tallying, you can motivate them to use. So that creates more opportunity for you to do statutory master. So it's very, very, very important. There's a query, uh, Manish. Okay, so tally is uh, looking at the suggestion. They have documented your suggestion. Yes, yes. <laughs> good Manish. So Manish has found a way uh, that one is for raw material. Very good, Manish. Fantastic. Uh, I'm reading uh, Manish Query's address. To, I think everyone gets the query what Manish has put. So what Manish query is that what is happening presently that Tally is alphabetically listing all items including raw material FG. So just to have a categorization, he has created a code. So raw material, suppose raw material, I'm a cotton manufacturer. So raw material is my raw cotton. So one raw cotton. So one is raw cotton. Then my finished goods is thread. So three thread. So based on the count I have. Good. Very good, Manish. <laughs> Got it, Manish. So there is a possible solution, but there will be problems. So that let us keep it restricted to this point only. The idea is that, yes, now see this discussion itself, what Manish has put and what Snehal has answered itself tells why we need to create a basic standardization. If I want to summarize the slide that we are looking at, what we are basically looking at, standardizing the procedure of doing things so that these are taken well taken care of. And see, once you standardize, uh, you know what change occurs? The change, I'm typing it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Vinit, we learn. We learn in the session, Vinit. Keep it, I'm keeping the answer pending. We will learn in the session. Yes, yes, thank you. So, you know what happens when you create standardization of fundamental shift comes and the shift is your organization that was probably people driven has become system driven. Okay. <clears throat> Let me put it in more perspective. I say attrition, we understand. Sorry for spelling, I think it's correct. Okay, attrition. Now, I'm putting this to all service provider. Again, you have to say yes. So, to, there is a vacancy at your client. I'm putting the name of the vacancy. The vacancy is, please say yes. Yes. <laughs> Good. No one says who is good or bad. No one is talking what is the quality of the accountant, but we all want to say yes. You know what? why this has happened? Because all the time, all our systems have been people driven. They're not system driven. I'll tell you case when we come to user, phenomenal case. You know this uh, income tax, I think you all know this faceless assessment. Please say yes. Income tax, faceless, just say yes to it. Yeah, we all know it. I'll tell you, phenomenal issue. Yeah, Arif says both. Good. Uh, uh. So that is the issue. So 
from people driven you need to convert yourself into system driven how you are going to do through creating these sops okay <clears throat> now once you have created masters you need to maintain maintenance means to ensure that the data that is in what i mean by maintenance maintenance to ensure that the data that is in master is contemporary current valid accurate today okay so when i say today you are not going to validate your masters every day but one of the core things that has to be done there has to be something called as a half yearly validation i'll tell you exactly how you are going to do it a half yearly validation of masters that is based on the volume of business but not more than annual saal mein ek bar to validation karna hi hai once a year validation is a must <clears throat> now what i mean by validation of the data so i'm i have taken two basic information one uh, source could be external other could be internal let us break down when i say master maintenance i mean accuracy of data what external factor may affect accuracy let me give with an example say the vendor or the customer with whom you have been doing business the business organization of the vendor has changed the vendor who was previously a partnership concern has become a llp limited liability partnership you know exactly what changes have to be done the customer to whom you were selling your product was a uh, llp now they have converted it to a private limited company you know exactly the changes to be done this is exactly vendor maintenance based on external factors this so that means uh, that communication has to be there and someone has to realize suppose your vendor sends a mail that we are llp today that means there has to be a process that the mail is tagged to the account manager manager in the company where this information is going to be updated in tally in fact uh, just completing the process how it has to be done like whenever you go to a medical store and you ask for a medicine and suppose the medicine is not available you know before the shopkeeper he or she suggests an alternate medicine or you call your doctor to get a name of the alternate medicine you know what is the first thing the shopkeeper does you have gone to the shopkeeper medical shop and asked for a medicine to be given to you the medicine is out of stock not available what is the first thing you see that medical shopkeeper do you can put it in the chat we have all seen it राइट इन ऑर्डर बुक एक बिल्कुल छोटी सी डायरी रखता है उसमें लिख देता है ये दवाई राइट दिस एग्जैक्टली इज हैज टू बी डन सो यस नो द फर्स्ट थिंग सो इफ योर शॉपकीपर इज सजेस्टिंग एन अल्टरनेट मेडिसिन एंड नॉट राइटिंग इन द ऑर्डर बुक देयर इज अ एसओपी इशू विद द शॉपकीपर इफ ही इज सेलिंग दैट मेडिसिन बट द पॉइंट इज द थिंग आई वांट ऑल ऑफ अस टू लर्न इज that if these mails have been coming to you and this mail suggests that there is a issue of uh, say update to master then there has to be way of documenting those updates and a review that whether those updates have been properly executed or not that is external internal factors your own processes have changed like we talked about mass manufacturing journal the bills of material uh, there is a new uh, manufacturing process a new raw material has been added those internal processes may lead to your unit of measurement may check change on inventory your own as a policy the board of directors of the company decides that they are going to review the credit limit that was 90 days given to customer this is going to be reduced to 30 days it's an internal decision it has to be implemented in masters very 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 important how you maintain your master then Uh, please say yes if you know that you can audit 
masters in tally please say yes point is auditing masters in tally say yes if you know it yes okay so taha truvet snehal good arif great the job is done great vidan thank you what is there that any new master that is created so if your tally audit feature is enabled then in the mailbox in the auditors uh, list of documents to be audited it comes master so any new master is created update is done it is tagged there so as an auditor there is a check built in system that you can check so if a new master is created what i'll do i'll go through that screen check 10 new masters created as the accountant show me that this new masters are created show me the form standard operating procedure the master creation form okay true ah, ah, ah. great thank you true no uh, uh, the name i am reading is bulandram uh, it is prospective bulandram prospective the next day yeah okay so that is so that is master so part 1 we are completing any query on this aspect uh, 30 seconds break then we'll go to the next part no uh, <laughs> i was waiting for this question mulindran let me give it with a more understanding example <clears throat> suppose the my vendor's name today is xyz okay xyz is a proprietorship concern the xyz proprietorship concern has converted to partnership concern so i will have to create a new master for xyz partnership because his pan the partnership will have a new pan number a new gst so what i will have to do as a part of maintenance exercise xyz the original will be in brackets proprietor and new master xyz bracket partnership so that is one aspect that you are going to do okay bulandran and in fact manish has also put it all these are prospective so to the second query that you had mulindran old data so old data is basically xyz proprietorship so it is maintained there new data comes to partnership then we are going to the next part of the session that is users rights do's and don'ts so <clears throat> okay it is prospective okay okay yeah that makes the question very interesting prabhakar it is prospective so the credit limit now what will happen because you have revised the credit limit today so when you make an analysis of the dues so if credit limit say in days was previously 90 days and you have reduced it to 30 days so you can go to exception report and find which uh, say debtors outstanding are more than the defined limit so then it calculates based on 30 days that is and there just to make it comfortable uh, so it is going to calculate on the present status in system so if the previous was 90 days the overdues will be calculated for that debtor on 90 days if it is 30 days the overdues will be calculated based on 30 days so it is as on date so previous data is also multiplied by the converted uh, the new credit limit yes so i think that answers your question prabhakar yeah now user rights do's and don'ts so uh, i also felt that we need some good uh, so let us create a background to this okay <clears throat> so i told you i'll share that case on accountants now see what is happening <clears throat> see this feature that i am talking about because i uh, how many of you use tally 5.4 say yes in fact i have used 4.5 also so yes okay so many are so at least we have a reasonable number of people who have used tally 5.4 now the next question okay thank you ah manish thank you <clears throat> so we are in the same year okay thank you are user rights were user rights defined in 5.4 tally 
say yes, no. They would. So since then, it's virtually 20 years. And we have been promoting them. Yeah, Jigar, okay, no issues, but they were there. The point is they were there. So it has been since then. So since that day, we have been uh, promoting user rights. Must do. So what exactly is user rights? So let us define the word and then we'll see this part practically. Because this was one aspect where many of you said that that gap is there. So we'll see how we can build. We'll see the value it creates. And here we will see how you are going to kill Alt C and then how you are going to ensure that there is no see if you restrict something then it must not restrict the business operation so we'll see how it is going to be built in your business okay so i'm defining the word user right for sake of comfort user right is ability of an individual to uh, ability of a individual to do something as per his or her job profile that is user right so we say that a person is given rights based on something we call as need to do and need to know. Kisi vyakti ko system mein kaam karne ka utna hi adhikar denge jitna uski job profile ke liye zaruri hai. Only that much right will be provided to a person in the accounting system. That much is ready for his or her work profile, job profile. That is how it is done. Now, user rights have some fundamental concepts built into it. So, if the definition is clear, I am bringing the concept and then we will go ahead. Okay. So one is the definition. How many, suppose a question is put, what user rights you will go to an accountant? So the right answer is the user rights will be based on the accountant's job book profile. That is. Now there are a few concepts which are inbuilt in user rights. Let us understand those key concepts and then we'll go ahead. One of the core concept in user right is <clears throat> what we call as maker versus checker. I'll make, we understand, but for sake of ease, I'm, I'll make it comfortable for all of us. Okay. So like our accountant, he or she creates voucher. He or she is creating voucher. The, suppose there's a mistake. There's an error. So we do not allow our accountant, they can create voucher. Okay. So to create, yes, but they cannot alter. To alter, the answer is no. So maker, checker, the person who creates basic information data, he, she cannot modify, update that data information. This is the core concept of maker cannot be checker like that. Just for example, say like uh, how many of us are CA here? Say I am CA. So I say yes. So those who are chartered accountants, please say yes. Manish has raised hand. So he's a C, I understand. Okay. Many of us. So that does my job. Okay. <laughs> so I'm uh, those who are not C, please don't feel out of it. It's only for the sake of understanding I am sharing it. Okay. So being a chartered accountant, what does it mean? Yes. Internal check, Manish. Thank you. Simple question. Can I see implement internal control? Yes. So if I've implemented internal controls, can I audit? No. The maker cannot be checker. That you call as division of segregation of responsibility. So these are the concepts which are built into user rights. So I'm just creating these concepts. Then we'll go into how you are going to do it. I'll share. They will bring Tally live here to see exactly where Means I understand you have the option, you know where the options are, but we need to understand from the creating because uh, how you create, what is the relevance of them? That is. So user rights, do's and don'ts. Okay. So the core concept is segregation of duty, maker checker. The rights are given based on the job, pro job book profile of the individual and what is need he or she needs to do and what he or she needs to know. Not beyond that. Then need we have talked about live. So let us go to tally itself. Allow me to bring tally and then we'll do. So next 
the balance part of the session will do in tally itself okay. just give me a second So I have shared the tally screen. Is it visible? Please say yes. Yeah. Thank you, Kuru. Thank you, Vijay. Okay. So uh, our core is reading about this. So what we'll do, <clears throat> uh, we'll start with the first, sorry, where this rights have to be. So how to create a usability. So I'm starting with the usability screen okay now what i've brought this uh, when you create company this is screen uh, the most important thing that i want you to remember this one control user access to company data yes that is enabling the uh, creation of user rights and creating this tally audit feature so both these options need to be yes I think we all, all understand. So to be able to use user, right, user rights correctly, the way they are made, these options have to be yes. Uh, I think all of us know this option. Please say yes in the chat that we know it just for the sake of uh, understanding. Yeah, thank you. So we all know it. So nothing, but they have to be kept. Yes, that was the only point I wanted all of us to understand. Okay. So having done this, yes, let us go to the next part. Now see, uh, <clears throat> because we are in prime, uh, in tally 9.1, this used to come in a different format, but let us talk it here itself. So this aspect we are looking at, okay. Password policy is not the core of discussion today. At the, just, I'll just share this slide, what password policy means for all of us. So, users and passwords, user roles, password policy, these are three things that are relevant right now. Okay. So, I'm bringing this screen. Right now, two users are there with username Atul Premdal. These are my email IDs through which I have bought this tally. So, one is tally.net owner and other is tally.net auditor. Now, if you see the right side of the screen, is it visible the right side security list? Yeah, this is very important. In fact, our most of our discussion will be only on this aspect, security list, what it means. Now, see, the one that you are looking at is a default security list. I'll show you each of them. Okay, so we'll first learn security list. Let me define security list, what it means. So security list is the rights of these individuals. These, like you can say this is the right profile. Like in mobile, you have this profile setting. So this is user right profile setting. So a user with data entry, he or she can only enter data. A user with owner, he's the owner. So the password I'm using is the owner's password. Then tele.net auditor that allows an auditor's user ID to remotely do it, tele.net owner, remote logging, and tele.net user as a user doing it remotely. So this is very, very, very important. I am first bringing this list to all of us. So here is this user rule. You saw that these rules are here. Now, I am showing owner. See, owner will not be role. Owner is like you cannot define own role of the owner. Okay. So what data entry he she can do? We'll create. Okay, we learned this one. 
because I understand, I feel this in GST, this is very, very important aspect. And Vineet had asked Sir Alt C, hata denge to fir kaam kaise karenge. We'll see that also. I'll show you. Okay. <clears throat> now, the screen that uh, I have brought, uh, how many, you, means I understand, how many of you have used the screen? Say yes, no. I know you must be knowing it, used it. Taha is no. Okay. So we must be able to use this. Okay. Now. Ketan. Okay. Jigar. Thank you. <laughs> Let us use it. So basic facilities, data entry. Okay. Now, this is zero. I told you the most part of our discussion will be this only. Zero. Now see, zero means what? Zero means that the person can make backdated entries 365 days. Zero ka matlab hota hai, wo vakti 365 din. See, please understand, it's a feature. We are not using it. So now I am asking this question back to you. If an accountant has to be restricted for number of bags, see, I'll tell you what is the problem. You know, this GS, uh, again, linking it to the statute, GST 99C returns, there are many practicing CA reconciliation. What was the problem we all found when we were making GST 99C reconciliation? One of the core problems was that the GST, the, the return, there is a mismatch. And the trouble, <laughs> yes, Priyanka, the tax credit is one of the issues. Uh, and other issues are that what is happening because this is zero. First of all, we don't have user rights. Now we are learning with this example why user rights are needed. Yes, true it. User rights, first of all, they are not defined. So then if it is not defined, what has happened? You are April 2022 GST data has already been filed. Something occurs, say, in November 2022, your accountant goes in April, makes a rectification. No one is looking to the implication of... So please understand this e-invoice I think e-invoice has already brought this issue to core about cancellation of sales invoices. I think there, there's a, uh, if you create an e-invoice, there's I think 24 hour cap that you can make any modification cancellation within 24 hours. Please say yes if I'm correct. You cannot do beyond that. But that is only on one aspect of the whole GST. There's a purchase aspect also. Expenses aspect also. So your accountant, he or she makes entry in April 2022. The returns are already filed. Then when you start filing 99C next year, you realize, oh, some gap is there. Redo that. So the question that I'm putting back to all of you is that if a restriction has to be put to number of backdated entries, what is the best figure you want to put here? Agar humko accountant ko backdated entry ka restriction karna hai, so, kitne din ki backdated entry ke ijazat dena hai? Not more than this. Three days. Yeah, true it. Uh, my personal, <laughs> Manish, one day will be tough. My personal take is 20 days. You know, GSTR 20th is the last day of filing. Believe me, you 20 days may look big, but even if you do 20 days, now your accountant is going to go haywire jump from here to there. One day, to go, you know, if you restrict it one day, what is going to happen? The accountant, and you tell ki, ab to ek din se mein entry karne nahi denge. the accountant will leave the job tomorrow. So 20 days. But you can take your call. You can say 30 days. The trouble is that it is by default. See, it's a software. It has to be configured. What is the by default setting? Let us see it again. <clears throat> by default setting is zero. That has to be improved. Okay. Then every aspect has some discussion to do. We'll take it later on. I want to say this to you. Yes. A data entry person has been disallowed. Full access. Let us see what he or she could do. Is this visible? The options provided by phenomenal options now. Means in fact, they had been there. It's because we were not using that to relevance never came. I told you start of the session. Please understand the session. You have to look from owner, board of directors, managing director, promoter, entrepreneur, 
service provider then value comes alter so this all restrictions i'll show you the difference also what it is making okay so a data entry person cannot access master that means you know what has happened to so this he cannot do alt c admin restrict now he cannot create a new master so now the question comes if the accountant has to create a new master then what to do nothing go to the accounts manager we will give master creation right to whom i'll show you to the accounts manager he will be able to do it yes okay <clears throat> so if you are able to see where my, my mouse is there disallow all this are restricted so now the data entry person he she cannot do all this how many options you can restrict let us see 93 is downwards and at least 24 more here so more than 125 one ah manish thank you ah, ah. 136 great and so you know what is the matrix okay let me show you Default setting zero. So one, two, three, four, five, six into one thirty six. That much level of restrictions you can create on individuals working. In fact, uh, I think one of few are here as a tally partner. So these restrictions are already in tally itself. You can further enhance the restriction. You can uh, by getting those TDLs. This can be for further restricted. what this is within tally right now we are on the basic itself this is provided within the tally itself okay so when we have seen let us see what difference it makes what i'll do we'll create a user so let us create a user oh sorry users and passwords so this users are there i'll create a new user i am giving this user data entry okay i call this as operator password is capital o then end of list yes so what i'll do i'll shut this and again open this now i'll open as operator let us see what happens any difference you see previous was the owner <laughs> killed it now if i want to create i want someone to be able mean restriction yes so your job is done then bhai koi cheez dikhegi nahi to chhedkani nahi karega he will because it's not part of the profile now gone so if the person has to create masters he or she will have to go to the senior person and once the see once you scale up the operation once you create a l1 l2 so once it goes to level 2 the validations are done that is why i told you our this session has to be visualized from top down concerns of the management this is only one part let us go back <clears throat> let us log in as uh, the owner now i i am again going back amul uh okay i'll go let us see what you have put so to amul's question let us see how it appears i am scrolling down amul you can create restriction
90% of what you want Amul is done here. In case there is something very specific you want, then we are part of a tally session. There are tally developers across India. You can get a TDL developed and create that restriction. So whatever you want is possible. The answer is yes. 90% you can do here. 10% you can create through TDL. That is. <clears throat> Now that uh, why we need to create this restriction, I wanted to share that case. <clears throat> so I think uh, minutes, uh, your queries is answered. Alt C, how you disable, we have answered that. We started that. You start creating masters. Delete Alt C for accountants. Create Alt C with a manager's ID. Or if, see, it is not necessary, you are a big organization. You have accountant and you are the owner, manager, everything. Keep that right with yourself. So whenever accountant, he or she comes for creating a master, he or she has to request you to create that master. Very, very, very important. <clears throat> now, why these rights are so important? So to that question about GST, the reconciliations, there's a larger issue that is coming up. See what is happening. This I talked about this. Ah, yeah. Okay. So, Taha, I'll show you that. Taha has put a good question. Let me show. So, you go to here. Display. Taha, the gateway of tally. D for display. A for account books. Uh, display. Yeah. S. And, yeah. The command is this, Taha. D for display. S for statement account. A for tally audit. Then, here you can see odd vouchers masters and users so it's showing uh -huh. okay. so it displays <clears throat> in fact i'll show you on a day book also display uh, day book let us do this f12 configuration So here the option has to come whether you want to show who has created or altered. Yeah, here it shows. Yeah, here it is. So here it's showing. It means you need not go through tally audit. In daybook also, you can see who has created the voucher. That is only, all these features are available when at the start of creation of the company, we said yes to both the options, tally audit and user right creation. That uh, is the question answered. Yeah, thank you. Now coming to that case and faceless assessment and what is the trouble? Why this is so important and needed? See, uh, attrition in accountants, we all understand that after 1st July 2017, those accountants who had slight knack of GST or Excel, they have been doing phenomenally good. And all our clients, means it's a like a persisting problem all our clients require good accountants and we are all short of them. Today, means we at an individual, in fact, I got this email from Tally. I need to thank Tally. I'll be sending my requirements there. The Tally is creating a, like a database where you can hire accountants through Tally. So it's a good thing they have done. We have, means we have been trying on our sales and believe me, this uh, requirement is to all of us that we require good accountant for ourselves, for our client, for our own business like that. So what was happening? <clears throat> now, please understand. Let us get to the back of the case. The core of this discussion is why user rights are so important and needed. See, one aspect I've shared that is regarding GST, that now monthly return filing is there or at a max quarterly. So beyond that, 
you don't allow any changes to be made. So that is why this restriction is there. Second aspect has come about this uh, data, like faceless assessment. Now, what happens? Assessment. Suppose you are you have then you are part of tax audit requirement. Your tax audit is done. You have submitted your return for March thirty first two zero two one. Now that return has been submitted, the data has been submitted. The scrutiny will come at least T plus one. So after one year, the scrutiny may be there. You may get notices from tax department respective section. Then you have to file your this uh, cash book and ledger in e form. You have to file to tax department. So what is happening? that then because the accounting was done by an accountant who is not here, he, has, he or she has already left the job. There's a new accountant who is doing the job. So new accountant is always very angry with the previous accountant because the previous accountant has done some silly mistakes and pathetic accounting. Then new accountant will always complain because he has his own, his or her own idea about doing things. Now, when this notice for income tax comes that you have to file your, uh, say, cash book has to be filed to, for the previous year, you have to send the cash book in PDF format to the AO. The new accountant, he, she does not check the cash book. The cash book has negative cash balances, generate PDF sent. Now, these issues have become very, very critical. We are e-invoice. The practicality is clear to us. No amendments are allowed in sales. This user right creation will allow, restrict, all of us will be forced to ensure that our accountants do not make rectifications, uh, modifications in the accounting system. One restriction that I, I also want to be implemented is this one, Alt D. So when you restrict, alter, delete is also restricted. So Alt D, that deletes voucher that deletes ledger with no entries, that deletes stock items with no entries. So our accountant must not be able to use Alt C and Alt D. It is to be done by a higher level person. So that is the core of the discussion on user right. If you have any query, then we'll go to the power presentation on this aspect. <clears throat> okay. So we'll go to the PPT. Yeah. Is PPT visible? Okay. So it is there. Thank you, KP. So <clears throat> we have talked about the need, the basic we have learned from Tally itself. Then creating user rights. So I've shown you with example, you can create user rights. And uh, to me, at least two users have to be created. Good. So, Truvet, uh, my suggestion is that, say, thir 31st March 2022 audit, if it is done, and you have split data, if data split is there, data split means now you have a separate company from, if data split is there, then I'll request you to create this on 1st April 2022. Yes, please create from this. So, I have a Audit is done, the balances are closed, split data. In the new company, you start doing it, must do. Then maintaining user rights is exactly the same. See what happens. Suppose you have 10, 20 users of Tally in your organization, then job profile changes, new person come and go. So you need to keep a track of all those. That is maintaining of user rights. So this maintaining user rights, to me, in any organization that has 20 or more employees, it has to be done on a month-to-month -month basis or not later than quarterly basis. It has to be done at least quarterly. Must do. Maintenance. Okay. <laughs> so we are on schedule. Yes, yes, yes. Then auditing user rights, yes. So let me bring Tally again, just for a second. Uh, <clears throat> display, statement of accounts, Tally audit, and users also. So you can see whether users are, uh, new users are created, rights are ad 
added, amended, modified, all those and what entries they have done. Back to PPT, yeah. So that is open house. So two aspects. So fundamental key concepts on masters and how to create users. So we are now open to any questions you want to ask. Thank you, sir. Uh, so anyone who wants to question, ask questions directly can raise your hand. I will give the permission to speak directly. <laughs> Looks like all the question, queries got answered during the chat itself. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll wait for just one more minute see, to see if we have any questions. Or Truvet, has, Truvet, you have a question? Please allow Truvet to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Please do raise your hand also so that uh, I've given the permission to talk to Mr. Sumir. And, uh, yes, Sumir. Yes, sir, I want to thank you for this session. Okay. <laughs> you can give thanks and feedback, but I'll request a question. Thank you. How sir, was it? I have a, sir, it was a nice session. I learned very, I was not using this feature. Okay, good. Please do it. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank yeah, Manish, you. it can be done. The answer is yes. No, no, Sabu. Okay, please what? for the questions done. Q and &E, no further questions. No, absolutely not, Manish. No, no, no needed. See, so you have saved cost for payroll software and I've created a more business opportunity for all of those who are service providers. I see no further questions. So yeah, I think. I, let us close. I request all to give feedback uh, to Tally uh, and uh, also send a feedback on what more things can be done. Yeah, to it, do send it in as a part of feedback. Yeah. Okay, so I think you should drink water. You've been talking nonstop for one and a half hour. I think two further more questions. Uh, okay, thank you. So, let us close. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you so thank you much Komal. again for this very engaging and super interesting session. I will now end the session for all.